Hello everyone, welcome to Jumper Man Tech, where we specialize in HVAC, we do everything DIY, and today I'm going to go over the refrigeration cycle. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech, and we have four major components to the refrigeration cycle, and that is our compressor, our condenser, our metering device, and our evaporator. To begin our lesson, we're gonna start with our compressor. A compressor is both a motor and a pump that compresses refrigerant and moves it throughout the system. Refrigerant enters through the suction line as a low pressure, low temperature, superheated vapor and exits through the discharge line as a high temperature, high pressure vapor as refrigerant is compressed. Refrigerant leaves our compressor, travels through our discharge line, and enters our condenser. Heat is being rejected in our condenser. A basic condenser is just a copper coil with aluminum fins surrounding for a greater heat transfer. This can be either cooled by air or water. In this diagram, this represents a fan and it's an air-cooled system. Upon entering the condenser, we are still at a high pressure, high temperature vapor. And as refrigerant travels through our condenser, at about the midpoint of the coil, our refrigerant becomes saturated. This is also known as our boiling point. This is where latent heat of condensation is taking place, where refrigerant changes state from a gas or a vapor into a liquid. Heat is rejected in our condenser. So in this diagram, these little red dots represent vapor. And as we enter our condenser, you can see it starts getting more condensed. And about halfway through the coil, well, once you see the solid color, this is where we change state from a vapor into a solid liquid. And that is what the solid red color stands for. So leaving our condenser, we are a high pressure, high temperature, subcooled liquid. Subcooling is a temperature difference between the refrigerant saturation temperature, which is right here, halfway through our coil, and our liquid line temperature. I will go further into superheat and subcooling and how to calculate them in a separate video. If so far you are enjoying this content, please drop a like and hit that subscribe button and I am beyond appreciative of everyone's support. As refrigerant passes through the liquid line, it can pass through a number of accessories, such as a liquid receiver, filter dryer, side glass, and so forth. But today, I'm focusing on our basic theory of refrigeration and its major components. Refrigerant next enters our metering device, where there are many types, but its main purpose is to distribute proper amount of refrigerant into our evaporator. If we look at our diagram, we have a low side with our evaporator and the high side with our condenser and our metering device is what divides the system from the high side where we have high pressure and the low side where we have low pressure. The metering device creates a pressure drop as you'll notice that the inlet is a larger diameter pipe than the outlet. Refrigerant then travels down into the evaporator. As refrigerant is traveling down into the evaporator it is now a lower pressure and temperature liquid as it passed through our metering device. At about midpoint of our evaporator coil, this is where latent heat of uh, evaporization occurs. This is where we have a change of state from a liquid into a gas. Heat is absorbed in the evaporator. A basic evaporator is just a copper coil with aluminum fins just like our condenser. As refrigerant leaves the evaporator through the suction line, our refrigerant is now a low pressure, low temperature, superheated vapor. As refrigerant changes state from a liquid to a gas, which occurs midpoint here, this will be our saturation temperature, the temperature increases as it travels down the suction line. The temperature difference is known as superheat. The suction line then enters the compressor and the cycle repeats. 
And there you have it. That is our refrigeration cycle. Just to give you guys a quicker recap. So our refrigerant enters as a low pressure, low temperature, superheated vapor, enters our compressor, compresses the refrigerant, and it exits as a high temperature, high pressure vapor. Travels into our condenser where heat is being rejected and about midpoint we, we fully condense and now we exit through the liquid line as a high temperature high pressure subcooled liquid travel on down to many accessories now we enter our metering device where we have a pressure drop leaving the metering device it now enters our evaporator and we are still a liquid but we at our lower pressure as we enter our evaporator you can see our heat is being absorbed and we, we change state from a liquid back into a vapor or gas leaving the evaporator is a suction line once again low pressure low temperature superheated vapor enters our compressor and that cycle just repeats and repeats if anybody found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe. I'll catch you guys next time. Yeah.